Introducing Small Tip for Big Results, Strength Hack by Chris Herrier. If ever there was a title to strike fear into barbells across the land, that is it. And as you will find out in relation to strength curves, this will make you go parabolic. I had mentioned that when you're using weights, the most effective and most difficult part of the movement is gonna be at the beginning of the exercise. And so his generic statement that the most difficult part of the exercise is at the beginning is wrong. We have different types of strength curves. We have parabolic, ascending, descending. Essentially, where an exercise feels easier or harder depends on the exercise. For example, the bicep curl, which you literally perform in this video and add bands to, is easier at the beginning and easier at the end and harder in the middle. And so to be fair to Chris, he does quite well in this video because he's only half wrong. And what he means by the most effective part is completely bizarre and only he will understand that brain fart of a phrase. His incorrect definition then sets up his whole video in relation to this strength hack. Today, I'm gonna be showing you one small tip that's gonna deliver really big results and can be applied to pretty much all workout routines. And that's one tip is combining resistance bands with weights. Using variable resistance Resistance is actually a very interesting topic and there is an evidence base for it. And so the topic of Harrier's video, I actually like. It's just he completely f***ed it up. And why Harrier's video is useful and hence me making this video is he is the perfect case example of when not to add resistance bands to barbells. And my reason for this application is his competency and exercise execution with the barbell movements, such as the barbell back squat and the military press. And his execution is very simply lacking and he showed this over multiple videos. Therefore, his focus should be developing his execution with these lifts and not becoming Inspector Gadget and adding resistance bands to them. He should work on the mechanics of his movement and then progressively overload over time by I'm adding more weight to the bar as opposed to stripping weights off the bar. Come on, I had to. He again uses some muscle fiber information in this video, which you can think of as not so much nuggets of goodness, but street corner chicken nuggets. He does, however, add resistance bands to his body weight work in this video, which is absolutely fine, great, no problem at all, because he has a high level of competency with performing these body weight movements. So Chris Herrier's video is a literal demonstration of when to apply and when not to apply resistance bands. In this case, when he has very poor exercise execution with certain lifts and very good execution with other lifts. Now, I don't think that was his intended goal when he made this video, but tomatoes, tomatoes. There are four levels of difficulty. Beginner, professional, legendary, Chris Herrier. That's debatable. One thing that Elite ThenX fans say to me is that Chris Herrier may not understand the science, but he's ripped and he's a great calisthenics athlete. Completely agreed. However, he continues to attempt to teach exercise science and demonstrate it by using major compound barbell movements on his channel. And so I actually went to his video on his ThenX channel and surprise, surprise, completely wrong too. When you're using weights, the amount of force that's being applied to the exercise is always gonna be consistent throughout the entire duration of that movement. Again, that's completely incorrect. We have different strength curves, meaning that with different exercises, as you move through the range of motion of those exercises, the amount of force and the requirement of force you produce changes. And so what is a strength curve? Spoiler alert, Harrier doesn't know. Well, it is the force that is produced at each point of a lift at certain angles. And very simply, you can think of a strength curve as being where does it feel easier during a lift and where does it feel harder during a lift? And this is determined by many factors such as leverage and the length tension relationship. You can kind of think of it as a magical journey from point A to B during a lift. Or in the case of Chris Herrier's explanation, the journey more resembles this. And whether you add resistance bands or not, it's very much down to you and your unique characteristics and situation. For example, are you a beginner or more advanced lifter and what sort of time availability do you have? Those are initial considerations. And in before the misinterpretation, please get here because they stop and search me in every video. I'm not saying don't ever add or use resistance bands and I'm not generically telling people to use resistance bands. What I'm making a point to say is that you have to think about its application. This is called giving analysis on a topic. And guess who else? should not be adding resistance bands to their squat. As I said in that other video, I'm not a high level squatter. 
I prefer low-rise apartments. If you're gonna put your jokes down below, I will steal them. That's what's called being a man of my word. It is an axially loaded movement. There is spinal compression. It is not the exercise to be messing around with resistance bands if your execution needs work on it. But one thing I never have and I never will do is give exact tutorials on, for example, the squat. In contrast to Chris Herrier, who's positioning himself as a coach by continually explaining incorrect exercise science and then giving demonstrations and tutorials on these movements. There are simply people who can teach compound lifts better. For example, Alan Thrall, you have calisthenics movements, squat tutorial, you have someone like Jeff Nippard with his technique tutorials, and that is a better course of action for you because after all, compound movements are complex and they are not the exercises you want to use a cheat sheet on. And so telepathically, I can already see the excuses coming from the elite ThenX fans. Oh, well, Chris was just speaking in general terms when he said the beginning of the lift is the most difficult. I think it's pretty clear to me. However, if you wanted to speak generically for some reason, you would say that generally speaking, the lower mid range of many lifts is the hardest. But again, that's problematic because we have different strength curves relating to specific lifts. And so what I want you to do is think of these terms on a spectrum of easier moving to harder within the movement. And so we have essentially three types of strength curve. The ascending strength curve, where the movement feels easier as you move towards the end range of motion. And when Chris Harris said the beginning is the most difficult, he was in the ballpark figure, that it's the lower mid range, for example, of the bench press or squat or military press, which have an ascending strength curve. You can think of the squats at the bottom end range of motion coming out of that hole. It's harder than when you are nearing full extension at the top of the squat. But again, something like the military press that Chris is showing is a high stressor exercise. He absolutely does not need to be adding bands in his context, he needs to be working on that execution. And then we have a descending strength curve where it feels harder towards the end of the exercise as you near full flexion. He does add weights vests to the pull-up and he associates it with this effect, forcing the muscles that are required to perform a pull-up to work twice as hard. Ladies and gentlemen, if that isn't exact science, I don't know what is. Hashtag twice as hard. And then last but not least, we have the parabolic strength curve or what is simply known as the bell-shaped strength curve. And this is where it feels easier at the beginning and the end of the movement and harder in the middle. It is bell shaped in relation to force. And I did make the joke that Muay Thai fighters would be proud of how Harrier's elbows fly in the last video, classic. But this is one exercise where Harrier can add bands if he wants to. And there's a level of safety to it and his exercise execution sometimes with a bicep dumbbell curl is fine. However, for example, his execution of the dumbbell fly in his home workout tutorial, which he gives to people, is inherently dangerous, the range of motion he uses with that fly. And so there are graphs of different strength curves which may help you. And in addition, there is a scientifically accurate graph of ego versus poor information. But to be real, his audience who are mostly younger males, and my interpretation is many of them are beginners with calisthenics or training, believe every word he says. And his comment section is full of people praising his misinformation and misapplication. Whenever I wanna work out and look like a badass, I go to Chris Herrier, the man who looks and trains like a badass. Chris always comes with the big ideas of training. However, there was a sprinkle of common sense in his comment section. But again, the idea that you can incorporate different tools into your training, such as resistance bands and for example, cables, there is an application of bands with barbells in terms of flattening out the strength curve, which will then make it feel harder at other points than it would if you were just using the barbell. And he was somewhere in the ballpark with this video. However, we have to be careful when we project information on YouTube to give science in the correct nuanced and multifactorial open-ended manner, not so set in stone, and you must apply it to yourself and think about your characteristics when you take evidence and then incorporate it into your regimen. And an example of Chris Herrier not doing this is when he gives this directly causal statement for why you should use resistance bands with barbells. And with weights and resistance bands combined, you're gonna challenge your muscles from the beginning to the end of your contraction. And that's gonna bring you crazy results, crazy power. So crazy. More strength and more explosiveness and super dense muscle. And when it comes to denseness, there was a joke in there somewhere, I resisted it, I deserve a sticker. You cannot make generic causal claims like 
like that, especially when you have different goals such as power and strength and statements like his belong in the BCAA bin. But let's make lemonade out of lemons. And another tool that people sometimes use are chains. And the reason for this is chains create a linear mass displacement. Very basically meaning, for example, in a bench press, the more the bar is pressed, the more weight will be exerted onto the bar by the chains. And it also sends you straight to cool school. Just ask the organic twins. And so in the last seven days, I've made two videos, one on training frequency, one on training tempo where I give evidence-based information presented in a nuanced manner that you have to apply to yourself. I've linked those videos down below. I've linked the lifting tempo video up above. As always, an upside to having no friends is I have more time to read comments. So please let me know what you think down below about Chris Herrier's video, but also your application of adding resistance bands or other tools to your training to manipulate the strength curve. Finn.